Welcome, I'm Christian. Welcome to podcast. Today we do rock like I don't know why I'm doing the <laughs> the accent. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm I'm. I, it was a good day today uh, because I just woke up to some wonderful news. My chance sweet buns was nominated. Not just nominated. It won the uh, the sparkling award for the Pico 8 award. I'm so happy. I'm so glad. This is just ah, uh, this makes me just so happy. Thank you so much for everybody who voted for it. It's ah, uh, it's it's my award. It's the award I'm really happy about. And there's some really great other people that really won some really good awards. Um, I'm just ah, uh, mm, yeah. Uh, I saw some games that I never saw before, and they won awards, and like. <gasps> There is like there is more exciting things in the Pico 8 community happening. This is this is just something that, that excites me. Another thing that excites me is you, there is just no way for me to show you anything. This is a definitely a problem with my setup. Uh, I have a list of things that I noticed last time around when I um, when I went through the footage of the recent recordings. There have been some low energy recordings, so today I'm a bit more high energy. Um, very important. One of the most important mistakes. Not obviously, all of you already noticed this, but I didn't uh, initially, at least. When we do infest rooms, that's just a function that we just wrote recently. There is a Y here that should be an H. Um, that resulted in actually most of our monsters spawning usually in the upper right of each room, and also sometimes spawning in hallways. But now they're they're spawning uh, in, in a lot better situations. Good, just little little fixer Rudy. Oh, um, there's another problem here. This one doesn't. We don't need that one. Duns. I like I like checking off the the individual things. Um. So another thing I want to be doing. Um. the in generation the when i do the the mobs so the way i do this i i clear the mobs in gen rooms right no i do it yeah i a map gen i mean i clear the mobs in map gen i don't like that um uh, because if i don't uh, generate a new map the mobs will stick around uh, um, and so, like, we can easily simulate this, the issue that that occurs if I set the winning floor to floor number two. So we go through a floor that has mobs on it, and then we go into the final floor that is not procedural generated. Of course, we well, it's gonna it's gonna be fine. Thanks to Minecraft mode, we can uh, we can we can get through this. So you see now the mobs are sticking around for a not procedurally generated room. Uh, bad. Um, in order to fix this, we actually have to delete the mobs every time we go to a new room. So I'm gonna get this out here, like this. And I guess yeah, why why not why not here is my is what I'm asking. There is no reason not to do this here, right? Okay. Um, yeah, and then generate the map. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Okay. Oh man, with the power of knowing exactly where the mobs are and being able to walk through walls. Oh wait, I reset it. It's fine. It will be fine. Not, not if not, not will be fine. I, I, I'm. I'm being thorough today. Uh, so why I'm doing this? So recently, I just yesterday, I almost already have. Just yesterday, I um, there's a really great podcast called the Spelunky Show, like which is a podcast about Spelunky um, with some really great game designers, and they recommended a game called Shiren the Wanderer, which I already own on the DS. But it's recently, um, as you're maybe as you're watching this, there's a really good deal on the Vita as well. Uh, on a Vita version, and I got it, and I really was struggling to get into the game when it came out on a DS. I was like, ah, this is very obtuse, I'm not really sure what to do here, it's like, uh, blah. and then uh, yesterday I was like, okay, I'm just gonna sit down and try to play this game, and uh, I I got it, now I got into it, and it's good, it's a good roguelike, and it's also funny enough, it's very similar to 
Um, I like unconsciously made like a tiny little shoe render wanderer. Obviously not as elaborate, and a lot of systems are missing. But um, you know, like throwing wet, throwing items, and and so forth. It's actually sometimes a little bit similar. Um, ah, another problem is uh, in gameplay uh, when we do the check end. Remember, I did this reload thing here. I, we don't need that anymore. That's just something for you guys if you use a lot of not procedural generated levels that you kind of modify and you want to undo them. In our case, um, we always copy the level into our play field. So we don't actually do have to do the reload thing. Um, because like the original template that we copy from never changes. The template never changes. I noticed um, there is a flash. The, the funny thing is like the flash, you don't really see the flash. Um, or at least in the recording, you rarely see the flash. I think one, in one instance you saw the flash. So the problem is like when the uh, thing fades out, the screen fades out and then it fades back in. Sometimes you get like one frame of seeing the actual level before any fog. And I don't really know what the problem is. I, the problem I had in the prototype as well and I'm not really sure why. Uh, I think it has to do something with the draw function being somehow cancelled midway. Um, so here. So you draw the game and you draw the entire map and you draw all the other things and before you get to draw the, um, the fog, it kind of like cancels the draw function and it also it doesn't fade out. So it's, it's really, it's just really odd. Um, there is a simple solution that I found, uh, which is here. What is what is this? We don't need this. Which is here. Um, we're gonna go if um, fade perk um, equals one, then return end. So if we completely fade it out, we just clear the screen and get out. Uh, we don't have to draw the map. We don't have to like draw mobs and so forth. It's, if you're in the, the screen is supposed to be black, we just don't draw anything, and that kind of takes care of the flash, um, which um, is a bit of a hack. But um, I I don't know why the flash happens. And so if you have any good um, explanation for why the ha flash happens, um, please do let me know. Um, so continuing on. Um, you know, little tweaks. Here, when we do the grow flag, uh, here where we do the grow flag, um, is it a grow flag though? No, no, it's not grow flag. It's here when we do the carve doors. For some reason, I, I wrote down grow flag. Funny. Um, when you do the carve doors, we're saving like, um, both flags f1 and f2 um, in our little object but we don't need the second one we just need one we're just gonna go f equals f1 and because we just need one flag to grow things from okay so continuing on uh, in place doors there is a bit of an issue let me see place doors you know, none of these are issues. Like maybe the first one was an actual bug. The other ones are, uh, are kind of like the really tweaks. Um, play stores or install doors, I guess. What? Oh yeah, I was I was thinking of whether it makes sense because using DX so many times, I was thinking maybe it's 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 it might be worthwhile trying a local uh, variable here. So we are at five thousand two hundred seventy. By the way, very high token count already. But we're not too far away from the ending, so so don't don't get nervous. I'm nervous for you. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna go dx uh, dy equals d dot x d dot y. I'm gonna plot this in here, and then we're gonna remove all those dots. And let's let's see if this will save us um, any any amount of tokens or if it will be a wash. It actually did not save us tokens. So actually at the beginning I was doing this kind of uh, structure a lot, but it seems like it's, it's in order for this to pay off, you have to reuse the object um, quite a lot. So it might be actually worthwhile now going back to the original function and seeing like if all of those local functions, local, local variables are actually justified. So, um, so there's like two more big things left. Uh, one is I want to be doing is I want to do 
I called it an agnostic can carve. Uh, with that, I mean, uh, I have uh, I have this this can carve function, and I've I've been like really not really sure how to deal with this because it's like ah. Uh, mm, uh, I have like this third variable that sh um, that kind of like is passed on, like is compared with is walkable, to kind of like um, identify tiles that are walkable or not walkable that have like um, can carve um, the can carve pattern. Um, and but using it in very different contexts. Uh, initially, this was created for the worm, so it wouldn't be walkable at all. But then later on, I end up using it in other situations as well. Um, so I added like this this thing here that kind of like so I can check for different kind of tiles. But then downstairs, like uh, when I do the stairs are going up or um, and the star stairs going down, uh, I actually ended up uh, having a situation where I want to check for the can carve pattern, but I don't want to actually know if this is walkable or not. I don't really care if it's walkable or not. So um, so now there's like a third option here, and so I'm using two can carve functions, but that's a mess. Uh, I had like a good. Uh, idea of how to do this. So I'm gonna make um, an agnostic can carve. So if I'm not setting the third um, parameter, so local um, walk equals walk equals nil, and uh, then I'm setting it to is walkable. Or Like this. Um, the only problem is now the x and y could not be in bounds, so we have to change this a little bit. So we're gonna have to go if in bounds, then return false. And, and then I'm gonna go if is walkable equals walk. Yeah, that's good. Um, yes, yeah, something like this. Um, yeah, so if it's nil, I'm gonna set it to is walkable. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna get the. Yeah, that should should work. Uh, let's try. Let's see how that works. Uh, let's, let's, let me see. Let me see a generated thing, random generated thing. Is what we call in the industry uh, a failure. Is, is, the, is walkable thing a problem? Is that possible? Oh, wait, if not in bounds. Silly me. Silly goose. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this seems to be working. Um, beep, 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 beep. I have a, I have a worm. Uh, from a song that apparently goes peep peep peep. <laughs> um, okay, so this is done. Uh, so I have like one last uh, thing. Um, I want to rewrite the worm function somewhat. And this might actually um, nicely dove into something I wanted to show off because it's actually pretty neat. Uh, this entire process might some be something that you guys are not really understanding anymore. Uh, and I, it's definitely difficult to kind of like wrap your head around all of the different steps. So there's actually a really cool way that I discovered yesterday. I was I was trying to make like an animated GIF for the social media to show off. It's like, hey, I did the thing. Um, oh, by the way, um, since we have now have the agnostic can carve, I just I completely forgot. So now we can use the agnostic can carve here. Uh, can carve, and then we don't have to supply the third. And that saves a bunch of tokens. Think I think at least it does. Or, or at least it makes everything a little more neat and a little more compact. So that's definitely a win for me. So yeah, now here where we're looking for the entrance uh, stairs, uh, for the exit stairs and the entrance of where our dude starts in, um, we just look for an alcove. But we don't really care if it's like a dead end of an already existing hallway or if it's um, like a new place that we would be able to carve into. Okay, so what do I want to talk about? Um, I wanted to show people how the procedural generation works. And r right now it's like, okay, you, you start and you go into the thing and it's like, you don't see it happening. It's just like, it's just there. 
So I found a really cool way of, of showing off the individual steps that also might help us debugging things. Um, so that's really nice. Um, so in here in the um, in the draw function, I'm going to um, delete the check fade. Um, no, that's not what I wanted. Wait, why, why is it? Why is it? Oh, I guess it, because it fades, starts faded out. So let's go fade perk equals uh, no, zero. Okay. So now it, stay, um, it starts faded out. Um, and so to, just to like show off how it looks. Oh, wait a minute, if I press a button, does it generate still? Yeah, it does. Okay. So just to show off how it looks when when the level is generated, we can actually use the same kind of function that we used previously. You remember when we had when we had this bug, and we used the flip function to kind of like show a frame, um, like to show um, to to people, you know, um, to kind of like show the debug information that we've written out to just show it for a frame, just so we can like see what's happening while the code is executed. Well, we can use the same function kind of like redraw the map while it's being created. Uh, and that's really funny. So, uh, or like that's really fun. That's really good and nice to watch. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be like a, like a preliminary function. We will remove it later on, but I really like to keep it around. I'm gonna call it function snapshot. And that will delete the screen. It will draw the map. And it will flip the, uh, flip the screen. Flip means, you know, again, showing like one frame. Um, okay, and so the idea is then here, when we're generating the room, for example, every time we place the room, um, we do a snapshot. Um, so, <clears throat> so you know, this, this kind of works. And then here, when we, for example, when the, our worm function comes in and, and our dig worm function comes in and starts setting the individual tiles, we could also do a snapshot. And so if you run this, oops, you see the worm digging, right? And we can continue doing this, this thing where, um, for example, here, the can curve is okay, get signature is okay, when in placing the flags, okay. Mm, growing the flags, I mean, we would have to show the actual flags. Um, so, you know, I, I, don't want, I don't want to get too deep into it, but it's kind of like really fun. For example, here when we do the doors, we can do this as well. And here where we uh, do, do the shortcuts, we can do it as well. And when we fill the stuff back in, we also do a snapshot. Uh, so yeah, now you can like, oops. So you can see like the, uh, the the process um, going going really fast. And if this is really too fast for you and you really want to like see what's happening, we can even slow things down. When here in a snapshot, we can do multiple flips. So we can put the flip in the for next loop to, to, to wait multiple frames each time. So we're gonna go for i equals zero to 10 do. And so now it's like 10 frames uh, for every step. So you can see the rooms are being created. Now this is a worm that's being carved and he stops uh, and respawns in different locations whenever he um, comes into like a dead end situation. So now we're almost finished. The worm has stopped now. Now we're adding a little more um, fuzziness to our, um, to our um, spaghetti. Now we're filling stuff back in and finally we're placing the actual doors. And then, you know, spawning the spawning these monsters. So you can see like the entire process, um, what is actually happening. And it, this might actually help a lot uh, whenever we get into a situation when uh, we don't quite understand how something was created. You can always add this uh, function to this. So it's kind of like becomes more obvious. Um, let me do a snapshot in one more place. So here, and this is the function I wanted to work on today a little bit, the maze worm function, because this is a bit of a, yeah, here we didn't do a snapshot here. Okay, so again, uh, the worm is carving out and the first one is usually very long. This one goes really across the screen because it found like the tunnel here that works very well for it. And then, you know, the rest one are kind of like picking up the pieces afterwards. Um, so now we see the fuzziness, like we kind of like, and, and then reconnection. This is now the reconnection of the individual areas, and now the back backfill again. Oh, by the way, I noticed there's something I did not do. So when we do the backfill, uh, I mean the fill ends, 
Uh, we use this candidate um, thing, but we actually don't need the candidate, I, I realized. Uh, what we can actually do instead is um, set the... Um, when you find a situation that we can carve, we just immediately fill it back in. Like so. Um, filled. And we have like a function called filled and we're gonna call it filled equals false. And then whenever we fill it something back in, we're gonna set it to true, filled equals true. Um, and until filled, not filled. Um, because there's no reason for us to, you know, to loop the entire map and fill in one tile, loop through an entire map again and fill in one tile. We can just fill in as we go. Um, yeah, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be, I think, a bit faster. So again, this worm is happening. This worm is happening. Oh, this is gonna be a good worm. And then this little boy. And again, now the fuzziness, the fuzzy spaghetti. Now the backfill. Uh, now in the reconnections. And now um, here's something that is, that is bad. Right. Um, here have to, we have to go underscore x and underscore y. Let's try this again. And you know, you could like even add more information to this entire process. You could like color the, um, the candidates, for example, in different tile uh, colors. I probably should have done this from the get-go to, to exemplify, you know, what the process is and also to maybe find some bugs easier. Um, but yeah, I really love the reconnection and then filling this stuff back in. It's so good. Okay. Good, that was a, uh, for some reason I, I didn't, didn't have this I'm not sure why I didn't I did I, I got confused um, so here I want to finally oh, deal with this maze worm I was a bit worried that this maze worm function is like this three-step process so first or at a two-step process at least first we go through you know we have a loop where we go through the entire map find candidates start digging with our worm and then once that when all the dorm worms have dig out then we go through the map again and start like doing the fuzzy spaghetti um, part so to speak where we kind of look for the places where the worm kind of could have gone in a different direction i think it might be worthwhile um, to do this part in the maze worm function immediately. Um, this requires us to not use the get sick function here um, and because we're looking for, t um, we're starting the worms, remember we're starting the worms in tiles that are completely surrounded by, by walls um, because we didn't want the worms to dig into uh, rooms. Right, we didn't want the worm to start digging uh, at the edge of the room, but it's fine if the worm starts digging at the edge of a already existing worm, technically. Um, but we kind of prevent it. Um, so here, where we go back, here where we go back and do the fuzziness, we kind of like also like um, respawn some worms or like spawn some uh, individual um, empty spots at the edges of the tunnels that the worms have dig out. So what we can do instead is we just want to make sure that if we're spawning a worm, um, we're spawning a worm always not at the edge of a room, but it's fine to spawn a, ro a worm at the edge of a tunnel that a, a different worm has already dug out. That means that we can skip this entire second process and just do everything just with um, candidates and worms in one, one step. And that's actually how I had it originally, but originally I didn't have this check uh, if the worm starts um, next to a room. And sometimes the entrances to a room got really screwed up. Um, it wasn't a big deal, but sometimes it wasn't just, it was not possible to place a door in a room. And that kind of like didn't, didn't, see, uh, didn't look nice. But now I have like this function here and I kind of like to reuse this function. Uh, it's, very, it's a very useful one. Um, the one that says, because we kind of did it, uh, also did it uh, when we installed the doors, right? Where we checked, uh, we have like is, the is door function, and the is door function is just use this next to room function, and so we're gonna use this one now to kind of like have a slightly different idea of what the candidates are for our worm. Um, just maybe to to to, to clarify, uh, let me go ms. Uh, if Ansible and else and um, we're gonna we're gonna color things in so just so we, because this might be kind of like you ha I have like everything in my head it might that makes sense but it might not send make sense 
if we look at this. So we're gonna color all of the, we're gonna use, first of all, exemplify how things look right now. We're gonna color in all of the candidates for our maze worm with a blue color and all of the other candidates, all of the um, things that shouldn't be carved with this gray color. Um, there's a problem. There is a problem. Every time you, you start messing around, you're so, I just want to do this little thing that changes the thing. And of course it doesn't, it's, it completely, oh yeah, I did. This was not supposed to. Okay, oh wait, 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 wait. Um, yeah, we have to do it differently. Um, uh, we have to split it apart a little bit then. Uh, because now we filled in back the rooms because obviously you don't, don't want to carve uh, things that are not... But okay, something like this. So you see the blue stuff is where our worms can spawn. And it's also, you know, also the, the place where our worms can dig. But you see, once the worm has dig out some tunnels, it kind of becomes... Um, uh, it's impossible for another worm to start digging there which is fine, it kind of like creates worms that have like their own areas, but it's also kind of like um, forces us later on to do like the second step where we actually, you know, um, make the tunnels of the worms more branch out more. And um, I want to, what I want to do is like kind of like a slightly different um, check. So what I want to do is if next to room, if not next to room, Um, wait a minute. So if can carve and not next to room is more my right? this is the check I want to be doing. So if can carve and not next to room. And it's slightly similar, but not quite. Look. So again, at the beginning, it looks the same. It looks the same as the, as the way we had before. But once this worm is finished, you will see um, that the tiles around this tunnel will remain blue or should remain blue. See, now the tunnels around this worm still are blue and another worm can spawn next to that tunnel. And you will see that this worm will actually dig through. Oh, he didn't dig through. That's fine. Why didn't he dig through? Oh, yeah, because the worms never break through. That's, that makes sense. So you see kind of like um, this process is, is um, requires us not to do the, the fuzzy stuff anymore, I think. Um, let me see if actually if it does the fuzzy stuff. So um, how are we going to do this? Um, I want to see what happens after the worms are finished. Um, so maybe something like snapshot for i equals 0, 220 and do flip um, print done zero zero eight. Or after worm. Let's try that. Okay, again, the worms are kind of carving out, and the when they're finished, you know, see now the worm spawned next to the tunnel that carved, was carved by another worm, which is something I want to have. See, so this is after the worm now, and there's no blue spaces anymore. So the second whole, whole step process that we have, where the tunnels become more fuzzy, that's actually not, not necessary anymore. Um, so what we can do now is we can delete all of this stuff. And we're going to have, hopefully, a very similar result. Okay, so let me, let me look at this one more time. I really love the, the the worms. They're so so 
the connections they create are so so in, in, intricate. And I just also really love how sometimes you know certain channels, like I, I, I love I love that we saw the worm going out downstairs and it's like we wasn't really sure what what was happening and then actually the exit ended up being there and there's this loop that was created. Ah, that's so nice. Good. Okay. So um, what I wanted to do now, I wanted to like simplify this a little bit because this was just like for us for preview purposes. Mm. Yeah, like this. Uh, okay. So all of this was uh, uh, slightly simplified now and we do uh, a, the same result with, with a lot less. I will keep this function, this snapshot function around. Um, oh, we, can, we can make it a bit, a bit faster now, uh, just so we can like see as, as I'm updating stuff. But, um, um, but yeah, uh, you can also like, um, if you comment this out, things should go like, you know, fast again so you can like always see how the process is working cool um right so this is going to be it for today um as always uh, visit uh, on the t-shirt shop downstairs um, and check out the code for the end of this episode downstairs in the doobly-doo and again uh, thank you so much um, omg mog for um, taking care taking uh, uh, the code at the end of the episode under your wing, putting up on your uh, GitHub. That's really useful for a lot of people who enjoy GitHub. And uh, also, um, yeah, check out the Discord where uh, OMG Mock and other people are hanging out. There's some really, so, so, so today somebody posted like a, a clone of this game that they made in JavaScript. It's, it's beautiful. I love it so much. Um, on the next episode, we will be back. Um, and we will do, I have something prepared here, we will do the tile decorations, the, the decorations of the walls. That's, I think, an important step that we have to do next. Uh, see you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.